hello once again, everyone, and welcome to this Geek Syndicate Doctor Who review type podcast jobby. Uh, this is our seventh week this year of doing these. Well, sixth week, really, because we did two episodes in one. So episode seven, week six of these podcasts. I'm here, as per usual, with Mr. Nugent to look at the latest episode of Doctor Who. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you from the depths of the time vortex. I mean, the the episode title was Can You Hear Me? Was it? I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't asking if <laughs> you could hear me. <laughs> Although that worked better than I could have possibly hoped. <laughs> well, well, that that's as... That may give some inkling to some of my thoughts of this episode, but there yeah. we go. <laughs> we go from the depths of the vortex. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even remember the title. Wow. <laughs> so usual rules apply. There'll be spoilers. We'll be chatting about it. We'll see what we thought. Uh, but we'll open up with the blurb, which is as follows. From ancient Syria to present day Sheffield and out into the wilds of space. Something is stalking the Doctor and her friends. As Graham, Yaz and Ryan return home to see friends and family, they find themselves haunted by very different experiences. Who is the figure calling from beyond the stars for help, and why? And what are the fearsome Chagaskas terrorising Aleppo in 1380? To find the answers, Team TARDIS embark on a mission that forces them to face their darkest fears. Can you hear me? Yes. Is what we're talking about. Oh, uh, uh, Oh, for the love of... Oh, so going to start keeping a tally. Anyway, Can You Hear Me? was written by Charlene James and Chris Chibnall. And it's kind of an interesting one because it's sort of trying to deal with sort of mental health and people's dreams and fears and stuff, which I thought was an interesting concept to play with, especially given the fact that they... I think they've tried to cram in too many people's dreams and fears like you know you had Yaz's story which I found quite interesting Mm -hmm. um and then Graham's sort of like reflections as well which came in later on in the episode which I thought for a couple of reasons one of which Carl Byrne who you know Dr Carl he raised on Twitter afterwards and it was kind of like it was kind of like yeah that's a good point but I'll get to that sort of a bit further on in the episode okay but yeah I mean I say I like I like the themes I liked what the episode was trying to do and the themes obviously being kind of people we are they kind of resonated with me uh -hmm. and especially i think yaz's story to a to a point especially because it's kind of you know she'd obviously got to the point where she needed to get away and i liked how they sort of resolved her story i think they could have done more with it i think there could have been more of that side of things but i liked the fact that at the end you saw the police as a positive represent you know positive um what's the word representation oh, representation yeah they were represented represented <laughs> in a positive way which isn't always the case in these kind of shows but you know the fact that she had that encounter with a police woman which put her essentially on the straight and narrow and then i must admit it's not often i do sort of like get emotional or something but i did have a little tiny little lump in my throat when she went back to see the police officer at the end yeah so that sort of worked for me plot wise the rest of it i don't know i kind of like I don't know what I thought. Does that make sense? I yes. kind of, I'm a bit ambivalent to it. What about what about you? What's your thoughts on sort of plot and stuff? Oh, I have thoughts. Give me them. To me, this felt like two plots battling against themselves. Mm. And I mean, I've got lots of random thoughts, but I so some of them may come out 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 of sync, as it were. But first off, I think this should have been a two-parter. Yeah, um, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think there was way too much they were trying to do with and do it all in one episode. I thought the idea of trying to have an episode that dealt with mental health, mental health, (laughs) that dealt with mental health. um, And and mental health. And mental health. (laughs) Yeah, I think was good. You know, I think it's good. But I think the way that they did it didn't hit the emotional kind of tones with me as this kind of episode should have done. And... I think some of that was because of what you said. There was just too... They were trying to do it with too many people. Yes. No, I you completely know? agree with that. Because if you picked one... So, like, Rat, so like um, Ryan's friend, I thought had a really good idea behind his story. Yes. 
but because there's been no, he's we've seen he's he's popped up a few times, hasn't he? I think I think he was in the last series a couple of times, yeah. maybe, yeah. But there's been no hint that he's had any kind of difficulties. No, it was kind of like uh, we need everyone to have some kind of issue here, so yeah, let's, so let's let's throw one at you. Yeah, so it almost felt like right, let's let's give his friend these issues where we hadn't seen those issues before. Now maybe that was always the case, and we weren't looking hard enough. I don't know, but because I didn't feel that when he went to see his mate for the first time when he was locking you know when he went in and he was doing all the locks in the door yeah and ryan was kind of looking like what the hell was going on to me if his friend had that kind of almost like agoraphobia do you know what i mean Mm. or whatever his whatever his thing was that ryan could have would have been more aware of it yeah and and almost like you know oh, crap, it's got worse again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he did, you know, he, he's made kind of made the point that it had been months since he'd seen him as well. So yeah. there was that. But also, I mean, I must admit when, you know, he started doing the book, because when he answered the door, and and this is, I mean, to be fair, it's a fair represented, representation of mental health because you don't you don't always exhibit the signs and you do try and put that mask on. But when he answered the door, other than he didn't want Ryan to come in, it was it was good. It wasn't like, you know, I'm talking about it. I think it was better than I was first thinking. So he, he wasn't like showing the signs until Ryan got in and he's kind of like, he yeah. noticed that things were off, which is good. But it was kind of like, initially I was thinking, what's he, what's he got going on? You know, is he, is he some kind of crime? Is there some sort of thing going on? So yeah, so I, I did quite like that. But I, as you say, I think the subtlety po- possibly and the, the fact they were trying to cram so much in, possibly, as you say, it would have worked better as a two-parter. They they needed to get to those beats really quickly. Yeah. And because and again, you know, this is the the curse of having so many companions, is that if you're taking any one of those issues, bit Ryan dealing with his friend and the fact that effectively he's kind of leaving his friend behind. Mm. The stuff with Yaz, which I probably think was done the best because it felt like that almost had the most time. Yes. The stuff with Graham, which was kind of really hinted at right at the beginning, but because he never really went back to it, it just, again, felt like it came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. If you'd taken any one of those storylines and kind of doubled down on it over two episodes, then you got, you got a hell of a lot of emotional content, whereas I just felt like the emotional content was kind of split up. It was like in chunks. Yeah. And when you compare that to, say, the that Dot 2 episode where they go and see Van Gogh, yeah, you've got an entire episode to focus on that character and his mental health. The thing that, the thing that Carl raised that made me kind of think about it was to do with that, and it was basically, it was compare and contrast 13th Doctor's sort of like brushing off of graham's chat and saying well i'm still a bit socially awkward almost for laughs compared with the 11th doctor's speech at the end of vincent and the doctor when amy's trying to work out why yeah things haven't changed you know and he's like saying but you know we made a difference to him in that moment sort of thing yeah i mean Uh, the the, the episodes are worlds apart for me yeah and that 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 last sequence where the doctor is it like you said to me felt like it was kind of almost played for laughs whether or not that was the intention i don't know but i was actually waiting when she sort of went i'm just gonna go over here do some stuff and then i'm actually gonna think of something to say i thought he was gonna just carry on doing something and then she would turn around and give him some yeah some speech you know yeah that's Um, what i was expecting and i also feel that it was a missed opportunity because we haven't really one of the things I quite liked about the first series was the developing relationship between Ryan and Graham over the death of Grace. Yes. And it just feels like now everything's like we're just mates now. And it's just not really their relationship isn't really dealt with. They're just they're just almost comedy psychics to each other. Yeah. And it, it felt to me that would have been this episode would have been a real opportunity for the two of them to kind of almost for him, for Ryan to find out, you know, that he's worried about, you know, that Graham's worried about the cancer coming back and there's someone to sort of bounce off. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And almost the ending with maybe, I don't know, with the two of them going back to the hospital for him to get them. I don't know. I don't know how he would have done it, you know, but I just feel it was a missed opportunity. And I do think that because they had, 
they were just trying to do too much. Did you think like the whole the bits in Aleppo? Do you think they added anything or? No, to me it was almost kind of like, well, it's a time travel show, isn't it? So I think I think there's two things. I think there's that, but there's also I think they were trying to raise awareness of something, but they didn't do a good enough job of it, which is the fact that the hospital in Aleppo in 1380 had a dedicated mental health care building. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it treat and they did, you know, the, the, the Islamic dogs and stuff, they treated their patients with care and respect. And the philosophy was that because God wouldn't inflict an ailment on someone without there being a cure, that drove a lot of sort of Middle Eastern and especially Islamic medicine forwards. So it's kind of like whether it was physical or mental, they yeah. accepted that the reason it was there was so that so that there was a cure for it. And they and they treated it with respect. But other than that one off half a comment line by the doctor when she first landed saying, Oh, Aleppo, renowned for their mental health care or something. That's that's the whole mention it got. And I and I think it deserved more than that. I think what it needed was the whole episode to be set there. Mm. because you could have done you know with, and with them sort of going up to the sort of spaceshipy prison thing because they were being taken to their nightmares like within their sort of night you know within their when they were captured and stuff so to a certain extent you could have done all of that and still been within, within the Olipo yeah and used that more and maybe more maybe made more of some of the staff who I'm assuming were killed or kidnapped. I don't didn't really explain what was what happened to them. I'm assuming I think she made I think the doctor made some offhand comment about them her rescue them and them all being in the TARDIS or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, th- it, I, I think the idea was that those uh, Chigaskas or whatever they were called were, were taking them to plug into the machine so that right, they, okay. they could be fed off basically. Right, okay. So here's my thing to begin with. I thought the oh, the first immortal that we meet is the, who's the bald headed dude. Mm. I thought he was the Black Guardian from back way back in the day. Yeah. And I thought the immortal who was trapped between the two collapsing planets was the, pardon the pun, was the White Guardian. Mm. So because I went to there in my own headcanon, I thought this was going to be some epic episode in which everything's going to start to get revealed. And then we're sort of finding out that Black Guardian's been behind the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or the two, you know, the two guardians are behind the whole thing. Which would be quite a cool call book and wouldn't be too continuity heavy because the only backstory you need is that they're immortals from before Dawn of Time sort of thing. Yeah, and it almost felt like they kind of used the idea of them and then subverted it. Now, if you don't know about sort of Black Guy and White Gun, I actually thought as villains, I thought they were a great idea and I thought they're plan as it were which was no real plan which was basically just to have fun at the expense of whatever planet they were on um because they were bored i thought was brilliant i like stuff like that Mm. however it was that to me it was it was too big for that one episode and the way that and they were kind of dealt with in like two minutes yeah and it just felt to me that they were they were basically just there to kind of drive the plot to the stuff they really wanted to do, which is fine. Well, actually, no, it's not fine because it didn't work. It just, it, it, it didn't work. It just felt like it took me out of the story. And then after they kind of got dealt with, we then got sort of, you know, 10 minutes of the sort of roundup and stuff like that. And that's kind of where you realize that basically they weren't really the story. This was the story. Mm. And I just feel they could have done it in a way where actually you could have served both purposes yeah exactly i mean using like things like immortals and, and the thing the thing i did quite like was they, they kind of referenced the other doctor who immortals so they referenced the eternals from uh, enlightenment who were basically bored and they were having like this boat race to get enlightenment then the guardians were both referenced and yeah. the toy maker from william hartnell days and i like that because it kind of gave this kind of like grand gravitas and stuff to it yeah uh, but one of the things i saw online and i kind of thought Oh, uh, yeah. And it was in the clickbait article. You know, it comes up on your Google yeah, yeah. homepage. And it was basically um, this season of Doctor Who is it's copying too many old monsters. And it's sort of true in a way because you, uh, and it's always kind of half referencing them. So it's like with the plastic disease with Praxius, it's kind of like they even reference the Autons because they're a sentient plastic. Mm. Uh, then you've got obviously um, 
the immortals this time referencing you know the the previous immortals and then you've got the scorpion people referencing the sycorax you know and it, it does seem to be a little bit of that and I, I don't think it's deliberately just saying oh this was a good idea let's do it again i and um, but we'll kind of reference the other one sort of thing i don't think it is that but it does i can see how people would think that and i quite like that because it actually makes the world more lived in yeah rather than just bringing back the same old same olds yeah and it just and also as well i just even the the nightmares that they were doing were really specific to drive the story forward yeah as opposed to i don't know more, more realistic for yeah. that person because i just kind of felt like like for example when they when they were going into all of their minds like this is their this is their nightmare and it was like ryan's nightmare was specifically to do with his mate leaving his mate behind and all the rest of it and graham's was specifically about his cancer return and then the doctor's one was specifically to do with the timeless child because they need to move the plot forward do you know what i mean yeah yeah you know you're telling me you know even if even if they'd had a standing in the ruins of Gallifrey and someone and someone rocking up and saying, I can't believe you've done it again or something, it would have made uh, I think it would have fitted more. It just felt to me that it was just too much where it's literally we need to get from point A to point B. What's yeah. the quickest way to do that? And, that? and I think that's kind of like true of the resolutions on it's And it brings me back to the point I made at the end of Skyfall, which sorry, not Skyfall, Spyfall, mm. which is. The resolution to this, again, it was kind of like, really, again, it was off screen and it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I've already beat you, really, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you know. And, and it, it just, it, it's like, it harkens back to what I used to call the Russell T. Davis big button thing, where the difference is, Russell T. Davis, you'd have a really nice sort of like character driven, usually story. And then you'd get to the end of it and it would be like, oh, dear, I need to end it now. Here's a big button to push. And that would end it. And you kind of didn't mind it so much because you'd had such a good journey with characters to get there and characters you were attached to yeah whereas in this case it just feels like sort of like and in spyfall it felt a bit like that you know it it was a little cheap but actually i'd had a good journey to get there but with this i'd kind of like felt like i was meandering through like you say point a to point b to point c to oh look we've beat you now because we've run out of time and we need 10 minutes to actually wrap up <laughs> wrap up stuff because we've run out of time <laughs> but i think the so when when he kind of reveals himself and he tells the story of the two of them which i thought was brilliantly done yeah that was nice animation and stuff like that and sets the scale of these two being that there's that powerful that the only way you could trap one of them was between two collapsing planets i thought was awesome yeah that that was that was amazeball and it, and it went to show this and that's how you do a whole um showing rather than telling to show the scale of their power yeah which you pretty much neutered with a couple of magic swishes of the sonic and a glowing ball and, and a finger and a finger it you, you know so there's that but i think when he then sort of basically everything was planned and it was just all an elaborate trap for the doctor because they needed the doc- I, i'm not still not quite sure why they needed the doctor to break her out whilst he why he couldn't do it um given the fact but, he's because plot barry okay i just worked on the basis <laughs> that given the fact he was an immortal and she was ignif- supposed to be insignificant to him that he would have been able to have figured it out. But anyway, I, I rolled with that. But I think the the bit where he kind of traps them all and they're all reliving their sort of nightmares and he... Oh, yeah, and the twist is, you know, she kind of frees her and, you know, um, she was a baddie as well. And then they were now going to like go off and just carry on what they were doing, but they were going to do it on Earth. And then she turns up on Earth and they're like... And he's like, no, take everyone. She's like, no, 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 let's take it slow. And she starts kind of putting it. We only see her do one thing, which mm. is like one nightmare to a kid. But anyway, to me, if you'd had her doing that, more nightmares going on, flips back to um, the doctor and that lot trapped in their nightmares. Boom, end of end of part one. That's a cliffhanger. Yeah. That's a cliffhanger. And then you've got a whole other episode to really get into the fact that you know these two are immortal beings and the doctor's really gonna have to pull it out of the bag to beat them yeah 
it just it just to me it sort of like cheapened cheapened the fact that they were the yeah like you say these immortal beings and the other thing actually thinking about it is the so the whole trap which I, which like you i love the whole you know yeah trap, it's brilliant trap on between worlds stuff. it reminded me of uh the demon the the de- uh which yes. was the demon yeah. you know what i mean yeah 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 um, where it's the, where the impossible it's the planet yeah the impossible planet and and the it's two part and yeah it's like that ancient before dawn time demon thing and, and he'd been trapped in a basically on a planet that was just on the edge of a, an event horizon yeah and it's that kind of scale uh and i think they did a good job of getting that scale across in this episode it's just such a shame that yeah like you say if you'd they had threw it two away parts, yeah and I, and i think part of that is because for whatever reason we're, we only get 10 episodes of doctor who now mm-hmm so there's almost like there's not time for like a middle series two-parter. Yeah. If you want to get a lot of stories over. I mean, from, it, from my point of view, you can do it. You can have like that season with Matt Smith where every story was a two-parter. And I love that because to me, Doctor Who should be about cliffhangers. And, and I've, you know, I've always preferred the older format of 25 minutes cliffhanger, 25 minutes cliffhanger, or 45 cliffhanger, 45 sort of thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, that if you have a good cliffhanger, it leaves you wanting more. Whereas a lot of the time with this, it's like, as you say, it's kind of felt almost rushed. It felt a little bit blasé and meh at the end, whereas you should have had that moment of, oh, my God, they've won. You know, yeah. how, how are they going to get out of this? That, yeah. like, and, and you could have used the second episode then to be in everyone's dreams while they try and fight their way out. Yeah. And then cutting back to the other dudes and seeing them wreaking havoc or whatever. Like, you know, so you, you could have had that that whole people's anxieties and fears and mental health stuff you could have had almost a whole episode of that without it taking away from the plot yeah and i think you could have still got across that effectively you know they they were conquering their fears that was the point of the episodes coming face to face with your worst fears or your nightmares which i would argue can be two different things Oh, absolutely, it's two different. You know, things. and I feel that's where it was a bit complicated. You know, it's like, well, you see your nightmares. Well, my nightmares and my fears can be two different, uh, two different things. But I mean, um, my, my my depression, my anxiety, and my nightmares are two completely different things. Yeah, you know, nightmares you don't really do random can be can be random, and they can sort of your fears can play into them, but by and large they're quite random. Mm. Whereas your fears, most of the time, you kind of know what your fears are. Yeah. You know, um, anyway, that's just being sort of pedantic. But I feel a two part would have given it more time to breathe. I think with the fact you've got multiple companions and the extra companions on top of that who have their own issues, I feel it would have given the time to do a story where mental health is at the core of it, justice, but at the same time, not at the cost of the actual story that you're trying to tell yeah i completely agree with that it, it's funny because talking about it as well it's you i say usually with these discussions i find that i'll start swinging one way or the other from what i originally did because we have these chats and it like if you've enjoyed something it'll make me feel more positive and stuff whereas with this one i'm still now feeling a bit meh yeah i i, I didn't I, you know, I've looked online. I know some people just really did not like this episode, and other people have held it as an amazing episode. And you know, the way it tackled mental health was great and stuff like that. Whereas for me, I just can't. I, I, I'm ambivalent, which isn't necessary. Which in some cases can be worse. I was just ambivalent. I kind of was like, yeah. And even the stuff that was supposed to really kind of hit home, it it just didn't. Mm. I think for me, it was like I'd have liked to have seen more of Yaza's in particular. I think the problem wasn't necessarily which one do you choose. Do you know what I mean? Which one was the best one? Mm. I, just, I, I just think all of them could have been equally good if you'd given them more time. And I think with the Graham stuff, I, it was literally in the very first episode he gets a checkup, doesn't he? Yes. And, yeah, yeah. And that's it. That is it. Yeah. And you, you can and at that time you can kind of see him looking at the do- as if to sort of go. Mm. But you know that's what six seven episodes ago. Unless you're gonna keep tugging on that string, just dropping it, just dropping it in when your seven episodes gone, it's not really gonna have the same impact to me. Whereas if he was being odd, kind of throughout, mm. or even I thought his fear wasn't even the cancer. I thought his fear was gonna be something to do around Grace, like the fact that he hadn't been able to save her. 
Well, not his, not his fear, but like his nightmare or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because there was a bit of that, wasn't there? Cause yeah. It, cause, or, go on. She said you you know, you didn't you didn't save me. Yeah. Which kind yeah. of came out of the blue out of after you know you've got you've got hours left to live. Why didn't you save me? Sort of thing. That again, it was. But that's how you know. Again, then again, that's how dreams and nightmares work. They are. Yeah, they do they, switch. They change track like that, don't they? So. Yeah. Yeah. But I think given the fact that it had the little clip of him playing cards with his mates and one of his mates was sort of saying, you know, how are you getting on without Grace? And he's kind of like, you know, I'm doing all right, just moving forward type thing. That's kind of where I thought it was going to go. And I think actually had it have gone that way, you already had emotional weight yeah, in place for it. Absolutely. That it sounds like he's got to deal with the fact that actually, even though he's saying to everyone else, yeah, I'm doing okay, he is still grieving the loss of his wife and he still feels bad, feels guilty over it and stuff like that. Yeah. That would have opened the door for a conversation with Ryan, perhaps, you know. So, so yeah, for me, it was, it was all right. you know what I mean? It was all right. I watched it. I didn't sort of come out of it going, oh, I hate it. Ugh. But I just came out of it going, yeah, that was all right. And I felt that it shouldn't have done. I felt yeah, it should have kicked the, me. Yeah, the subject matter deserved more, and it deserved, as you say, it deserved a part two. Yeah. To to, yeah. to bring everything up from from both sides of the story, you know, from yeah, the, definitely. You know, the immortal aliens and and the mental health side, it, it deserved, excuse me, more time to sort of focus on both, really. So, so you know the bit where Ryan's the last sort of scene with Ryan and his friend, and they have the conversation, and Ryan's like, you know, there's one thing, you know, you could do for me, whatever. And then the next scene is him in a sort of uh, meeting, a counselling meeting. I thought that was brilliant. Mm. You know, I just thought that was brilliant where it was the whole kind of like, you know, I thought I was the only one and then one of the other guys says, no, you're not type thing. I thought that was really good. Yes. But I just felt how much more weight would that have been added if they'd been dropping it in throughout the series whenever he went to his mate, that his mate clearly wasn't doing great. Yeah, it was deteriorating. Yeah. Jan seemed to have a much more of a beginning middle and end to her her sort of journey through the episode yeah but again it's like you say there wasn't enough room for it and no. and, and, they, and they managed to they managed to do a full arc with that one uh even if it did sort of come out the blue because there wasn't really before this episode there wasn't really any hints that i can remember anyway i mean feel free to correct me if i'm wrong listeners but i, yeah. I don't remember any hint of a you know past of her running away or anything before this episode but as you say, it, it did. It had it had a full. It was a story. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. And I liked I liked her last scene where she, I say, she found the police officer and gave her the gave her the fifty p. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? I thought to begin with, I thought it was going to be a twist. I thought for some reason, and I know it would never have worked out. I actually thought it was. I actually thought it was her. I, okay. actually, thought, I actually thought it was an older version of Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So when she turned up at the at her doorstep, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> she's, yeah. It's actually not, okay. Maybe I'm just looking at this way too hard. I actually found that the doctor's nightmare in speech marks was, I'll call it as I sit, it was rubbish. Yeah, what, well, me, it wasn't a nightmare. It wasn't. It was, to me, it was a, it was a teaser trailer. You know, like, that's it. You know, like that bit in Batman v Superman where um, Bruce Wayne's got all the, sort of logos up on your screen it's all different footage and basically it's like a little mini trailer of justice league because one of them's about wonder woman one of them's about aquaman one of them's about the flash yeah, yeah that's what that scene felt like it was almost like ah coming soon you know like with the timeless child yeah and i get what the master's saying like oh it's something deep repressed in our memories but then if she's reliving nightmares why would it's uh, just been on her mind that's all in it it's yeah yeah i suppose yeah to sort of round up didn't love it didn't hate it i was just and um, equivalent to it i certainly wouldn't be watching it again and i just feel that they've they've tackled these issues before in doctor who even within jody's run you know with some of the stuff between sort of graham and uh, ryan and dealt with it better i felt that's just me yeah so can you hear me yes was the oh. episode that we just <laughs> god damn it Oh, I was hoping I could get one more in. <laughs> uh, anyway. Can I, I think... just say as well, I thought the fingers were creepy as all as all hell to begin with. Yeah, I was going to say to begin with. And then when you 
I don't know. I don't know. They they just lost impact quite quickly for me. Yeah, I think when they started being USB drives, I think that's when I was a little less terrified. Yeah, yeah. So, can you hear me? Episode seven of Doctor Who. We've now reviewed. Ah, see, I didn't do it that time. So we've <laughs> we've nope. uh, reviewed it. We were both pretty ambivalent to it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I like you. I I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. If it comes on again, I might watch it again just to kind of you know just to see if I'd missed something. But it certainly won't be one that I seek out to watch again. Yeah, uh, no, I won't be watching it again. And it, and it was almost a disappointment, especially after the, the three previous episodes that I've really loved. So, yeah. but you know, I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, it's no, I just I think there was a way. I just think there was so much potential as well with the with the villains of it that they just got really short shrift. Yeah, that that's um, the, that's the shame of it. I think. Yeah, it's and waste, I th- wasted potential. Yeah, and I think that final shot of them when they're they're both in the orb and they had the sort of monster thing, it just looked so comical. Mm. It almost felt a little bit like a I was like a end of a Scooby Doo cartoon. Do you know what I mean? It just <laughs> didn't. I don't know. It just you almost wanted them kind of trapped in there, but raging against it and like you know like we're we're coming back for you type thing. It just yeah. didn't. No. Yeah. Anywho, wasted potential. Anywho. Not great, not terrible. We'll see what next week has to bring. Yeah, I don't. I think that's that's all there is to say, really. That's it from me. Cool. So, as usual, everyone, you can get in touch with us in touch with us by email, uh, thegeeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk. Barry will make sure that I get a copy of it, any feedback that he deems relevant. And there. thank you for uh, the, the the people who have uh, sent in. Uh, feedback is uh, most appreciated. Yes, it is because it, it proves that we do have listeners. <laughs> if nothing else, <laughs> say that. I mean, I just like having a chat with you, so it's uh, it's all good for me. Yes, can I just say a special shout out to to Martin of Bad Wolf, who has been uh, basically promoting us wherever he can. So that's high praise indeed coming from from him. Um, and also Matt Williams, who had sent us an email in. Yeah, we had we had a good uh, good back and forth with him actually. That was uh, yeah, it's good. So. Yeah, so again, feel free to get in touch with us. There's email, which you've said, uh, Facebook. We've got a Facebook page. We have Twitter, which is at Geek Syndicate for Barry. Uh, and at WedgeDoc is me. So do feel free to let us know what you thought. And again, keep any theories you've got coming in about the series and where it's going. Because if we get enough, we might have a little compilation. You look at them at some point and just chat some through. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see where, how we go. No promises, but that's that's the, the intention, probably, if we get enough to, to have a scan through. So, yeah, thanks very much. We will see you next week. Can you hear me? Bye, all. <laughs> see you next time. You're a petty man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>